Hallelujah. Thank you for watching Real Word Outdoors. Thank you for sharing our videos. I want to go to the Word of God in Psalms 139. Psalms, the 139th chapter. I want to start reading in verse 7. The Word of God says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Glory to God. God sees everything. He sees the very intents of the heart. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. He sees everything about you. The Bible says even in earlier in this chapter that there's nothing that's ever come out your mouth, your tongue that's been spoken. There's no thought, anything you've ever thought that God does not know. Now somebody out there today is feeling like you are too far away from God that he will not hear your cry. That you have gone so deep, so dark, so, so far away from God that he will not hear you. I want you to understand that you have never fled from God's presence. You cannot fled. flee. If you make your bed in heaven or make your bed in hell, the presence of God is there. God is everywhere. God's not scared of your sin. He's not scared of your darkness. He's not scared of your black heart. He wants to save you. He wants you to call out to Him and be saved. The scriptures say, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will not forsake you. He will not leave you because Jesus paid for it on the cross. Glory to God. When He hung on the cross and shed His blood on the ground, all over the ground, splattering it for you and I, He died. God put all the sins of the world, your sins and mine, every sin, every drug addict, every prostitution, every lying, thieving, whatever sin you can possibly think of, homosexuality, whatever sins out there, even to the to the just simple bad, bad thoughts and bad intentions toward people. He took every sin that is conceivable and those that we can't even conceive and placed them upon his own son, Jesus, on the cross. And then he died in that state, died, laid in the ground or decayed for three days. Then God raised him up with the same Holy Ghost power that will save you. The power that God raised the Son of God up with is that same power that comes into your heart and convicts you and lets you know you're a sinner and then changes you in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. You are born again when you call out to Jesus, repent of your sins, believe on the finished work of the cross. You are born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You cannot come into contact with God, the one true God, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, be converted with the Holy Ghost power of God and be the same. It's impossible. You cannot be the same. It will change you forever. Now that's pretty bold statements, but they're all true. And I want you to know why God will not forsake you. I want you to know why, no matter where you're at, how bad you're sinning, God's presence is there wanting to save you. Jesus paid for it on the cross. It all goes back to the cross. This Bible speaks points toward the cross. Jesus came to get on the cross. They arrested him at 2 a.m. in the morning in the Garden of Gethsemane. They did false trials against him. They made false accusations against him. They whipped him and scourged him. At 9 a.m., Pilate nailed him to the cross. He hung on the cross from 9 to 12 for three hours naked, in front of everybody, shamed, whipped, beaten, mocked. They walked by him, they shook their head looking at him, cussed him, told him to get off the cross if he be God, made fun of him. The very people that loved him watched from a distance. He was completely hanging up there, shamed and humiliated because of my sins, your sins. And as he hung there at 12 o'clock, God said, that's it, I can't take it no more. And he turned his back on him. The scriptures say that it went dark. I want to read it. I don't even want to try to quote it. Matthew 27, verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was forsaken by God, so you never will be. It don't matter where you're at. 
It don't matter if you're in the crack house. It don't matter if you're in the whore house. It don't matter if you're in the bar. It doesn't matter where you're at. You may be watching this video by accident somewhere. You may be laid up in adultery. Praise God. Call out to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Be born again. His presence is there. That same power that saved me, that same power that has saved thousands, millions of people from the time Jesus hung on the cross until now is the same power that will resurrect you. Take something that's stinking and dead and make it new. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, we've all, all of us have been there. Each and every one of us. It says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past, we all walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, hallelujah, but God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith his great love he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. All you have to do is call out to Jesus, repent of your sins, believe on what he's done for you, receive that free gift of salvation, and be born again, and be a new creature in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, old things have passed away, behold, all things become new. So my question for you is, what are you waiting for? Until next time, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.